Welcome to the Twin Creek Audio YouTube channel. Today I have something different than our usual videos about analog recording equipment and combining that with digital equipment. Today is something much more on the digital side, but different than anything else I've shown on the channel. Today I'm going to be looking at Code.org's Project Beats. Code.org is an educational website with a lot of different learning activities that help teach coding and Project Beats is one of their latest creations. So let's take a look at it. Of course, there's a nice video here to watch. I do recommend watching this video. I've watched it several times. I'm going to go in here and show some of the highlights now, though. So you've got this Win Run, which is Win Run, down here when you click this, obviously. And so you've got Sounds, Control, Effects, and functions. This is uh, to create your own custom functions. That's really useful because it helps simplify things and helps a lot with the ranging. So we'll go to sounds and then control. Okay, if you want two things to play together at the same time instead of playing sequentially, you would use a play together block. So we'll use a play together block and grab some sounds. I like to just use some of the loops because I'm just trying to save time and the little grid programming thing, I'm not the best at that. So let's see. Um, this one, I'm preview that. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. So we'll get another sound, play notes. I'm gonna have those play together at the same time. And I like a good road sound. Let's do not a G7, let's just do a G major chord arpeggio up or you can do down, or you can do random, or together we'll play all the notes at the same time, just play the chord. So I'm gonna choose arpeggio down, and so we've got that block there. Now I wanna create a special function, my function, I'll rename that to uh, part one. And I'll put my play together block in there. So now I have that bit that I created there together, can come over here and find the corresponding block to my part one function that I created. So let's go ahead and create another one. Now, let's see. I'm going to do one that's play sequential this time. First of all, I'm going to play a beat. Play one beat. Let's start with the disco beat. And then I want to play a different beat after that. So we'll play Ruby B2. Okay, why not? That sounds good. And then we'll play a drum fill after that. So, hmm. Oh, I want a regular drum kit, not the glitch sounds. some kind of random tom fill with a cymbal crash here and there and maybe a ride cymbal thrown in open high hat there see okay that'll work so we've got this and then i want to put something else with it another play notes or i don't know we'll just do another loop if we want to get rid of that we just drag it back over here and that's gone another one of these play loop want it to play at the same time as this sequence, so I'm going to put it here instead of inside this block. There's groovy beat, disco beat. Um, let's see, those are all drums, so let's have it play something that's not drums. Okay, now I want to create another function over here. We'll call this part two. Part two, I'll put this inside part two. I'll go over and find my corresponding part two block, put that there. Now let's hear what we have so far. Okay, 
see what I did there? I messed that up. I need to put this inside of a play together block. Like that. And then now it'll play like I was intending it to. Then I can have maybe part one come back again. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a part three. And I'm going to go ahead and call that part three. So I'm organizing my song with these function blocks. And then just doing all kinds of weird stuff with the sounds. Let's see, groovy beat, a syncopated beat. I don't want that, I want the, uh, oh. Let's do some notes with this, just to get it started here. Let's see what else can we do we can add effects too we can change oh, let's let's put some delay on that I kind of like the medium delay setting for part three. Oh, we've got to put part three in over here so let's hear this now I want all these to play at the same time, so I need another play together block. That's kind of important here. It's just a very different way of arranging music. It forces you to be more creative in some ways because it's a very different way of arranging music. I want the boom bass to play along with that longer I can use a repeat block here put boom bass inside repeat block and then have it play it twice okay the repeat block needs to be inside play together but not inside play sequential like this I think play notes right here they're really loud so let's use the volume control to turn these down just a little bit at least down to medium cool it's kind of a lot of fun there's all kinds of different things you can do over here the different ways to play sounds you can add rest too I didn't really do that in my work so now I have a part four that I've created. Don't forget that the actual tag to make it play, attach it to win run. So I've got part one, part two, part one, part three, part four. So part four, I've got two play notes blocks. I am gonna want those to play together at the same time. So I need a control block for play together. Let's put those together like that. Sometimes I'll audition these before I use a play together block. So I've selected bass for the sound here, arpeggio up, and I can just choose the notes. Of course, I click on the note to enable it. If I want to change the note selection, just click on them again to disable that. See what this sounds like now. Mm -hmm. 
pretty cool. Of course, I can make these longer and repeat any of these parts. I find it easier to do the repeat box this way unless it's part of an arrangement like it is in this block. But I can put part four inside a repeat block over here and thereby repeat the entire part four however many times I want. In this case, just two because I don't want this to get too long. Another thing you can do in the control category here is you can make a trigger. So you pull the trigger out and I've got that set to number one and you'll see it gives you a little trigger pad over here and you can attach a sound to that. Let's attach a like a chord or something. I'm just going to do, but I'd like to have it be a synth maybe. So there you have it, a pretty cool little sequence with some loops and a trigger. Check the links in the video description for a link to code.org's Project Beats as well as the documentation so you can become an expert on Project Beats. I really enjoyed taking a look at Project Beats from code.org today and I hope that you'll do the same and go check it out. The links will be in the video description. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope each and every one of you out there has an excellent and wonderful day, night, evening, weekend, weekday, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, whatever it is you're having. Have a good one. Thanks so much for watching.